Hi, my name is Samantha. I'm a volunteer with Gingiva. Gingiva Hospice. What does dignity mean to you? To me, dignity is the manner in which we are treated through life and through death, pertaining to worth. For everyone has different ideas of what dignity is. But we all get the same feelings when we're not treated with dignity. The reason I'm talking about this is because there are people are getting older, living longer, but really not healthier. And this is causing more disability in the world today. You are here because you are paid to care for others. But you may also know and love someone in the wheelchair. Or you may become disabled at some point. I am here to tell you I experienced it and give you my perspective as a disabled woman in a wheelchair. I have been in a wheelchair for 16 years. I have a rare form of muscular dystrophy and years later was diagnosed with that man. As of today, I am the only one in the world with both, both diseases. My mom was my biggest inspiration. She inspired me to make a difference in other people's lives through fundraising, public speaking, and furthering my education, which I did. I, about three years ago, I earned a, a degree in human services. I've had three major back surgeries, which left me as an inpatient in a physical rehabilitation hospital for a total of six months, followed by three months of constant home care and about 20 different caregivers over my lifetime. Ten years ago, I married the love of my lifetime. Doug gave everything up to care for me 24-7 as my caregiver. Now, that's the true love, tell me what it is. Next, I'd like to review with you a few different activities of daily living or ADLs. They include moving someone in a wheelchair, toileting, dressing, and grooming. But before I get into the first ADL, I would just like to remind everybody that we are people in wheelchairs, not wheelchairs with people in them. We are individuals with different ideas, thoughts, feelings, personalities personalities. 
we should always be treated accordingly. Now let's talk about how to move someone in the wheelchair. When in the wheelchair, you then begin to send the chair in front of your body by the plate cycle my feet, the arm cycle my arm, back rides in my back, and the needles I call my hair. When somebody just comes up behind me and grabs the handles without saying anything, just move me to where they think I should be. It is like a caveman grabbing the woman by the hair. And without taking anything, just moving her to where he thinks she should go. We don't live in a given sight. So instead, you always want to approach the person in the wheelchair from the front. If you approach from the back with your side to scares us. It's not all the way. So don't freak us out. You want to open lines of communication. But don't forget to include the who, what, why, where. For example, Mrs. Jones, there's great new basic chords in the art room that I thought you would like. Starts in 10 minutes, I'd like to take you if you want to go. You wait for permission. Walk by the chair, grab the handle. But before you can start moving, just by wanting to a little joke, not a belly laughing joke, like a small, subtle, spark joke. My favorite has always been keep your hands and arms inside the movie vehicle at all times. Like you're going on a ride to Disneyland. And that always makes me smile. Toy Lily. Which is my favorite topic talk about in public <laughs> with strangers. I'm going to wave my magic wand. When I do, I, I'm going to permanently reach the word diapers from your vocabulary. Bibbidi bobbidi boop. Oh God, they let my twelve body bath get the better of me. Now let's start saying depend under garment. Alright, even now CNA said she calls them bikinis. The word diapers should really only be used if you're under the age of four. A 
want to tell you, I started working with CNA only a few hours a week for respite. Her name is Marcy. On our first day together, I had to pee. So, Mark brought me in the bathroom. She transferred me gently to the toilet. She would give me a warning of cold butt before she placed me on the seat. She checked to make sure I was safe, put toilet paper in my hand, and turned her back to me in the doorway. I had to give me privacy. She waited till the bee stopped or till she kept getting to ten. And then she asked me if I needed help a wiping. Well, my mouth dropped to the floor. I was so pleasantly surprised by that remark. So when I picked my mouth up off the floor, I responded to her with sarcasm. And I said, Marty, I'm 36 years old. I think I know how to buy my own ass. She turned to me and said, I, Sam, I know how old you are. And you probably can do it. But anyone with a neurological condition may be able to do something one day, but not the next. Because she increased communication with me, but that led that I started to earn my trust. And all that trust would lead to my dignity. Our next little subtopic on toileting are suppositories. It's the boss door not exactly a pleasant subject to talk about. But you really want to try to keep your patient calm and relaxed. Try to keep their mind off of the impending to coming their way. And maybe talk about a, a cool place you went to, a book, or a movie, or even play some soft, relaxing music. Like, let it go for frozen. Dressing and grooming. I can buy dressing and grooming because they're pretty much in the same time. This must be the most time-consuming activity that you do all day. 
I need to give you some ideas of ways to save some time so you can spend more time cherishing dignity. Open up lines of communication by asking the patient if they if they need help. Patients want to help. They want to help during this ADL. It, it gives them meaning. And that's important. It's important to always let your patient do as much as they can, for as long as they can do it. It does not matter if you're in hospice for an hour or in hospice care for six months. Everybody wants a feeling of accomplishment pride. They need to feel the pride. You also want to ask if they want to get up. Your patient may not want to get up and that's okay. But know that they will watch you to see if your voice changes in tone or if watch every movement you do to make sure that you are not showing any disappointment. Patients don't want to make anybody upset the most vulnerable, uncomfortable, intimidating moment for a patient is when they are completely naked with a caregiver who is fully clothed comes in. It's like they're exerting authority authority over the patient. It makes for a very uneasy, uneven playing field. Now, I'm in no way saying that the only way to improve the situation is for you to get naked with them. But, you may want to offer a robe or a big t-shirt, a towel cover them with a blanket, whatever you can do to make it somewhat a little more even. Pads, shower chairs are bad. But if all you have access to are the hard, cold shower chairs, why not warm them up? Put warm water over it and let the warm water kind of take over the shower in general so it's not cold. But you don't forget to put a towel over the shower chair because it gives it a little more friction so the patient won't fall out. Shampoo and conditioner in one. They work great. You may want to offer a washcloth 
So the bandages covered their eyes while well, you rinse out their hair. That is nice. Not being nice and kind go a long way in cherishing dignity. Mouth care. Electric toothbrushes give a better, faster clean than using a manual press. And you don't need a lot of coordination or dexterity to use it. Mouthwash. An all-in-one mouthwash without alcohol works great for people that can no longer breath. Wet and dry razors. Uh, wet and dry electric razors. For men or women work great. They're, they're a lot safer and a lot faster than the patient can use it themselves and that's a good thing. Clothing should be loose and comfortable like sweatsuits or pajamas. But they should not in any way have buttons, clasp, zipper, or snap tops. Every everything that go over your head is good. Sweater, sweat shirt. T-shirt, blouses, even button-up shirt. But be sure you button them before you put them on your patient. Leaving just the top couple of buttons open. When it comes to any sort of pants, they're perfect. As long as they have elastic weight or drawstring socks, regular like regular crew socks, the socks with the stickies on the bottom, they're good, but. They're a little bit harder when you put shoes on over them. Knee-high socks are wonderful. When sitting in a wheelchair, your circulation may not be that great. And you may have really freezing cold feet and legs. Shoes. The Velcro shoes work great. The very easy but on your patient may be able to do it themselves. Sneakers with elastic, elastic laces are wonderful. Just anything that you can slip on it's great. Unless you are a stripper, there's really no need to wear Velcro clue. Everyone needs a sense of control.
lacking control can lead to feelings of you're not important and ultimately hopeless. My friend is a geriatric social worker and she said that a lack of control comes from someone that is experiencing a series of losses but the way to call to give your patient a sense of control is through choice. When you give choices to your patient, they will light up. Your choices need to be very appropriate and safe. You need to wear socks. Do you want black ones or blue ones? You need to take a pill. Do you want to take an hour or ten minutes? You don't want to give your patient too many options. Because then it becomes really overwhelming. I put it on very briefly bad eating. Bibs are for babies. Clothing protectors are for adults. Eating is a very intimate and delicate thing. You want to set the right atmosphere. When a patient is in hospice care, they do not have to eat. So you always want to ask if they want to eat. They may not want to, and they should never be made feel guilty. Even though their family members may really want them to eat. People think as long as you eat, you will stay alive. And that's really not true, but it makes them emotionally feel better. Let the patient set the pace. Nonverbal cues, like a look, being satisfied that they're done. An open mouth for more, a smile if it's good, an itchy face if it's bad. Secret for being successful. Patients are called patients for a reason. Remember the golden the golden rule. To enter others you have done to you. Before you go into a room, you want to clear your head of all of the things that you're thinking and feeling. Whatever you feel, it reflects like a mirror onto your patient. For example, I had a caregiver years ago who got into a car accident and she was driving into work. She came in and 
was showing stress and fear and just being frazzled. And that rubbed off on me, I think, because I had to be transferred to the toilet. While she transferred me, my knees gave out completely and I almost fell down. And that was from her negative emotions that reflected on to me. And you speak to someone in a wheelchair, you want to drop down, speak at eye level, but don't drop the level in the way you speak. A patient does not need to hear baby talk or over enunciation. Don't refer to us in the third person when we're sitting right in front of you. For example, about 10 years ago, my mom and I were in an elevator. And the door's open, and in walks a woman. The woman looks me up and down and then looked at my mom who was standing behind me said, oh, I love her shirt. Where did she get that? And my mom looked at her and said, I don't know, but you ask her. And she huffed and puffed her way out of that elevator. Now you never want to assume abilities of people or feelings, especially what or what they're going to say. When you assume things, you make an ass out of you and me. I have a little bit of a challenge for you. I had recently moved into a new home where I needed to Learn my surrounding I had to turn on a light switch and where the doorknobs were and had to flush the toilet. I wasn't able to flush it consistently. But then when I finally started to get it the right way. I would cheer and clap for myself. And I still do that today. I made a t-shirt. Says, I take pride in accomplishing small victories in life. So my question to you is think of ways that you can help your vision achieve their own small victories. I just want to thank you.